Look, I don't believe this phone. That's the third call I've lost this morning. Second, sir, Mrs. Johnson slammed the phone down on you. Well, this better be good, Mandy. Well, I wouldn't say it was exactly good. It's this memo from our no-nonsense, straight-talking manager, Mr. McCree. <clears throat> Uh, these are difficult times. We are reviewing our situation in South London. We can all help. We have to cut back on office stationery. Sir? Sir, did you read the memo? Look, all McCree is saying is cut back on office stationery. Paper clips, that sort of thing. Paper clips today, people tomorrow. Haven't you heard all the rumours in the canteen? I don't go in the canteen, Mandy. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> well, in yesterday's tea break, I was told by Jean McCree's secretary that a little bird had told her that head office are looking to restructure branches, merge us with Camberwell and generally make cutbacks. You're not going to make me nervous, Mandy. Well, if I were you, I'd be petrified. Think about it. If they merge us with Camberwell, they're only going to need one assistant bank manager. Yes, but if they only need one assistant bank manager, they're bound to give the job to... <laughs> <laughs> Because he's been here longer than you, precisely, sir. Mandy, you're making me very nervous. I just want you to know, sir, I'm not going back to the typing pool. You realise how much my mortgage will be without the bank's subsidy? And as for working for anyone else, well, we've been through too much together. The repayments on the BM alone will be astronomical. And today of all days... Well, I'm not giving back my gold card, I can tell you. <laughs> Why today of all days? I've been with the bank five years today. <laughs> I just almost forgot. Head office sent me a memo on your five-year service pit. <laughs> I was going to give it to you over lunch. Lunch, sir? That's in view of the circumstances. <laughs> well, sir, you're meant to offer me your congratulations and then pin it on me. Yes, 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 congratulations. But what are we worrying about? We're two young, integral members of this bank with invaluable years of service behind us. They can't get rid of us just like that. <laughs> Michael Ambrose's office? <gasps> yes, Jean, it's Jean. Jean. <laughs> Mr. McCree wants to see you in his office immediately. Oh! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shirley, let me give you a hand. Oh, my legs feel like they're going to drop off. It's a nightmare out there. Anybody would think it's Saturday instead of a Monday morning. <laughs> it's too busy in here for it to be a Saturday. <laughs> Can I get you a cup of tea, my sweet? Oh, yes, that would be lovely, my darling. Oh, thank you, Pope. Eh? <laughs> Next. Next time I go shopping. I'm gonna wear shin pads to protect my legs from the peck and push chair brigade. <laughs> you don't realize why you're so busy outside, don't you? It's uh, half time. How would you know the difference? Your term begins and ends in here, loafing about the shop. I'm oh, sorry, Uncle Pope, but that's a reactionary and stereotypical remark, isn't it? That students spend all their time loafing about the shop. I mean, we're students, right? We're serious, intelligent members of society, fully aware that the future of the nation rests in the palm of our hands. Now, don't forget, the student of today is the leader of tomorrow. Yeah, man! <laughs> In Matthew's case, the student of today is the student of tomorrow. <laughs> Who is that stranger sprawled out in your chair? <laughs> he reminds me of a little boy I used to know. This is my son, Sean. A suitable name for a barber's son, do you think? <laughs> and when intelligence, innovation and leadership were being handed out, the Ambrose family was right there at the front of the queue. You must have been away that day, eh, Des? <laughs> Tony, when I want your resignation, I'll ask for it. Anyway, this is just the beginning. When I get out there, I'm gonna make my mark on this world. Well, I hope you clean up after yourself. <laughs> there ain't gonna be nothing to stop me, right? Because I've got drive, initiative, charisma, modesty. Of course, you name it, I got it. Yeah, you see, nothing yet. That, my friends, is definitely an Ambrose. <laughs> it looks like a newspaper to me. <laughs> Look, I bought you this T-shirt from the market. <laughs> uh, great, thanks, Mum. You don't like it? Well, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that you won't be seen dead wearing it. <laughs> oh, dear. There was a time I used to know your taste. You're growing up so fast. Still, if you don't like it, you don't like it. <laughs> Sorry, Mum. Oh, but thanks. What, no business? But it's so... Oh, oh, damn. Damn. Will no one let me forget it? Well, Des, <laughs> maybe it's like a Don the old sandwich board and trot up and down the high street, mate. Ha. Well, maybe it's time you got out of my shop. Des, Des! <laughs> I'm trying to help, aren't I? Yeah, listen, Lee, if you really want to help, mate, take a seat over there and pay for a haircut, huh? <laughs> no, it's too late. Fat Larry's already done the biz. <laughs> you got your haircut, you fat Larry! Des, Des, it's half-term. You're normally busier, and he was packed as it was. 
Yeah, well, what do you expect, Des? Fat Larry's got four top stylists all doing the latest cuts, yeah? And how many you got? Me. I've told you before, Des, we need another assistant. Especially in the halls, one to attract the kids. Someone young, someone innovative, street. Did someone call me? Perhaps <laughs> you know me better by my alias, Sean Scissorhands. <laughs> you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Pops. Fat Larry's a kicking, but that's not to say that with my assistance we couldn't be kicking her and jamming her and slamming her. What has happened to the English language? <laughs> Sean, I've told you before, you just don't become a barber like that. Why not? You did. <laughs> Six years of experience. Ah, oh, Dad. I've done it at school. We're always shaving designs in each other's hair. Well, we had to stop, though, because kids started turning up with four-letter words in the back of their head. <laughs> You're right, so you want customers? Well, stand back and make way for Desmond's, the next generation. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, this is a turn-up for the books, isn't it? In charge of restructuring. <laughs> you know what this means, don't you, Mandy? Yes, it means we've got to recommend staff for redundancies. Well, look, don't be so boring, Mandy. It means that McCree thinks highly of me. Well, that makes two of you, then, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, I suppose it does. Right, let's get sacking. Well, uh, cracking. Uh, this is the phone Mr Ambrose is having problems with. For some reason, his extension keeps getting cut off. I know, the stuff. One in the counts. Blonde hair, glasses, moustache. <laughs> Sophie, sir. That's the one. Hardly ever here. She can go. Sir, she's on maternity leave. That is my point exactly. You don't catch me swanning off on maternity leave, do you? <laughs> got another one. Kid with spots. Young guy. He's got spots. Alistair the cashier? <laughs> but why, sir? He's got spots. <laughs> sir, don't you think we should be a bit more methodical about this? I mean, we are talking about people's jobs here. Um, sorry. We, Mandy? Sorry, who's we? Were we given the job of restructuring the branch? No, sir, you were. That's right, Mandy, I were. I mean, was. <laughs> but we wanted my skills, my judgment, my authority. Therefore, these redundancies are going to be based on my decisions. Have you got that, Mandy? Yes, sir. Good. Uh-uh. <coughs> that tune in one. I know it. It's something to do with alcohol. Please give me a drink. No. Nope. This phone is not working. No. Nope. Shall we give them a clue? No. Nope. It's a large rum and coke under the palm tree by Siebert Williams of the late night nope. drinkers. Nope. Well, what is it then? <laughs> I want scotch. <laughs> one bourbon and one, one beer. beer. Bye. It was Melbourne and the Aladdin chicken shocker. Right. You see, I was right. It's about drinking. <laughs> Hair to this shoe. You had a parting in your hair. <laughs> you had hair to part. Now, we played this to death when we first opened the shop in 1963. 1963. In 1963, I was still a student, a mere child, in the Gambia pork pie. I knew all the words to this song. You had Amos Milburn and the chicken shackers in the Gambia? <laughs> Now, they used to be on Caribbean Club on BBC World Service. We listen to the World Service all the time. Ta da da da, ta da da da. You can do the World Service by not pretending that you can sing. <laughs> Mrs. Ambrose likes to have this day. I don't mind if I do. But if my husband comes through that door, you'll have to hide. <laughs> oh, look, ain't it sweet? Hey, a pork pie, I bet you're a bit of a nifty move in your day, yeah? What do you mean, my day? My day's not over yet. Watch this. <laughs> Brother, what on earth are you doing? I'm dancing. Now, that's not dancing. This is dancing. <laughs> Respect to the older generation. And over here on the dance floor, we have Sister Shaw and Daddy D giving an off leg twirl. Respect to that. And right here, giving it a textbook step, we have Matthew. Even though I've never read a textbook like it. And in the spotlight, we have Pork Pie, who obviously needs to spend a penny or two. Enough leg work, enough respect, enough said. Enough respect. Yo, 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 what's this old farmer's record, man? We used to play this to attract customers in the 60s. Uh, customers in the 60s or in their 60s? <laughs> Man, sometimes I think this place is like a time capsule. 
Look, if you keep up with us, right, we'll soon have this place kicking. Hey, Tone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. FAB, brains. Jeez. <laughs> right, now let's get this show on the road. As from this moment, we're not just the barbers, we're a hairdressers. Now I'm here, and I'm dressed. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> the sunglasses! <laughs> Real music, real music. <laughs> oh, not so loud. This will get the bros in, Mum. Well, how do you know we're going to get any bros in? Because I've put the word out. Everyone under 18, half price at Desmond's for the rest of the week. Half price? Boy, are you trying to ruin me? Listen, Dad, we get loads of customers at half price, but we charge them a pound extra for every lamb we put in their head. Run those options past me again. Okay? <laughs> Listen, Pops, I think you know where I'm coming from. All right. Go soon. Look, Pops, customers! <laughs> Hello? 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 Mandy! You yelled, sir? Well, this phone still isn't working. Well, perhaps you should add it to your hit list, sir. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? It means the word is out. People are nervous wrecks. The canteen is a hotbed of rumours. You think you could try that with a few more metaphors this time, Andy? <laughs> well, does anybody know what I'm thinking? I was only given the job a few hours ago. Well, all I can say is, tongues are wagging. Really? And whose tongue in particular, Mandy? <laughs> See, there comes a time when a boss-secretary relationship can be sorely tried. And if a humble secretary thinks that her far-from-humble boss is behaving like a jumped-up, pig-headed, ignorant, reptilian apology for a man, I believe you should say so, sir. <laughs> Are you daring to challenge my authority, Mandy? Let me see. How can I put this? Yes! <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Good. You're fired! <laughs> Good! 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 Get your African hats here, African hats, three pound a hat, only three pound a hat. When Sean said he was going to drag this place into the new generation, I didn't realise it meant dragging Lee and his dodgy goods in here as well. <laughs> it's a little bit noisy in here, Celeste, but hang on, I got the answer. <laughs> Better? There you go, down me old mate. I ain't never been asked to cut a shape like that before, but if I say so myself, that is pretty dread. <laughs> you're learning, Tony, you're learning. Now, Darren, what do you need to go with a Chris R-Price haircut and even Chris R-Price African hat? Now, these are real African, mate. <coughs> <coughs> Real-ish, kind of. <laughs> Sean, what's this poor boy's mother going to say when he goes home from Desmond who's here looking like this? I know what she'll say this. She'll probably say, Oh, I see they've taken the old boy after haircuts now then. <laughs> How much commission you paying me on these hats? Uh, ten percent, Dad. Get your African hats here. Only three pound thirty a hat. <laughs> right, who's next? Matthew, you ever seen any hair cut like that? That boy's head looked like it was in an accident. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Papa. In certain parts of Africa, warriors shave their heads in such a way as to intimidate the enemy. And in Peckham, they do it to intimidate their parents. <laughs> Sure, man. I didn't know Desmond's played such wicked music. Yeah, well, now you all know what's up, man. Yes. Hey, what's up, man? Kicking. <laughs> Sean, turn the music down. You're driving the customers away. Oh, shame. Oh, shame. shame. Oh, no. It's all right, Sean. It's all right. Mom, it's not driving the customers away. It's bringing them in. Be crank up the volume, man. All right. Yeah! Oh, oh. <laughs> before, Lee. Oh. <laughs> what's that squeak? Your drums need oiling. You better get arthritis in your old age. Is that what you got then? <laughs> you ought to have a book in your hands. But what's the use of books at your age? I know <laughs> one use. Sound defense. <laughs> now you have a slack up for free. <laughs> Book, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can no longer take any more of this. Me too, Desmond. You're driving your oldest customers out of the shop. Oh, no, why don't you two go upstairs and help yourself to tea? Ah, uh, Shirley, this is the sweetest sound I've heard all day. Popeye, let us withdraw and raise ourselves above this pandemonium. <laughs> 
In fact, Dad and Mum, why don't you go upstairs as well? I mean, me and Tone have got things under control down here. Hey, Tone. Yeah, go on, Dad. Go on upstairs. Put your feet up. Don't worry, Shell. You two, we can look after things but down I'm here. But I'm finished with my customer. You ever had a feeling of being pushed out to your own shop? <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, it's Michael, isn't it? He's had an accident. Lee, turn the music down. No, he's fine, Mrs Ambrose. Although the carries on the way he is, he may well meet with an accident. No offence, but he's, he's the most unprincipled, arrogant, condescending smug... Yes, yes, that song's like Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, usually I take things at my stride, but this time, well, he's been given the job of restructuring the branch. That's management talk for giving people the chop. Yeah, that's a job he'd enjoy. Well, he's like a man possessed. He fires people left, right and centre, and he started with me. Oh, oh, is he? And he's got it in for one poor kid because he's got spots. Says it'll frighten the customers away. <laughs> Michael's saying this? Yes, he's out of control. Someone's got to do something. That's why in desperation... I don't think there's anything we can do, Mandy. I know Ambrose men. Once they're on their high horse, there's no getting them off until they meet a very low branch. Well, only up to a certain age, surely, surely. <laughs> well, well, shall I? At least I got it off my chest. Well, that marker doesn't know how lucky he is. Listen, man, if you ever need... Sean! Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, anyway. If only most parents were as sensible as you. Well, if we were like most sensible parents, we wouldn't have had Michael. <laughs> Andy, can I give you a lift anywhere? Uh, no, thanks, Lee. I haven't got far to go. You know, there is one way you could do with Michael, didn't you? Maybe I will take that lift. You know, you were saying about this geezer now, the one with the spots. Yes. Yeah, well, let me tell you about a boy we used to call Marshes. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that sound? Yes, that used to be us. Oh, we've had some good times in that shop. You know my favourite memory of the shop? The heat wave of 76. No, that was a year. But you know the best thing about that year? The English learned about real heat for the first time. <laughs> Everybody running around half naked. Yeah, <laughs> even the sweat was sweating. <laughs> <laughs> the shop door stood wide open. We'd hired one of those big fans, and the whole of Peckham was in that shop. Glued to the television, watching the cricket. England <laughs> versus the West Indies. <laughs> the Saturday of the fifth test at the Oval. Uh, I enjoyed every moment of it, even though I didn't have a clue what on earth was going on. <laughs> <laughs> that was the year I made my Michael Holding rum punch. You remember mm -hmm. the one that knocked everybody for six? <laughs> and Shirley made the salt fish fritters. Yeah, man. <laughs> and the television was on in the corner with the sound down. And we were listening to John Harlock painting pictures on his Radio 3 commentary. <laughs> and Greg setters himself at the crease. Lloyd calls another slip in close. Michael Holding starts his long run up to the expectant cheers of the crowd. Holding, majestically striding in off his 22 paces in perfect balance and impeccable rhythm, he bowls. He's bolded! Oh, my goodness! The crowd is gone, <laughs> and Greg has gone for 12. And England done for boy! <laughs> yes, those were the days. Well, I don't suppose you could stay the crease all that long. <laughs> We've had a good innings. Shadows are lengthening on the grass. Maybe it's time we declared. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> me, remember? <laughs> yeah, I suppose I did, really. But surely this won't affect our relationship. Oh, no, sir. I wish all my relationships were based on the sack. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, you still going ahead with your list? Maddie, it's a job that has to be done. Including Alistair with the spots? Top of the hit list. Don't you mean zit list, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Leave the jokes to me, please, Mandy. Does the nickname Marshes mean anything to you, sir? <laughs> what? Oh, it's nothing. 
Yes. That's a little story I heard today about a 15-year-old boy who loved cricket but didn't get picked for the team. A tall, gangly lad, size 12 feet and shoulders that made him look like a walking coat hanger. All the boys called him Marshes. Do you remember why, sir? I don't think we have time for this. Oh, I think we do. They called him Marshes because of his... Acne. Yes! Acne Marshes! <laughs> Because of his spots. Listen, man. You convinced yourself that you weren't picked for the team because of your face. Michael Ibrose, were you or were you not good enough to play in that team? I was. I was. <laughs> and is Alistair being dropped from the bank's team because of his ability or his spots? <laughs> Mandy, I've been thinking. Um, would you like to help me with my list of recommendations? Does that mean I get my job back, sir? Yes. Another five years, sir. Let's hope so. <laughs> Oh, by the way, congratulations. Pin it on me, sir. <laughs> wow, what a day. Now, was I good today or was I good today? Yeah, were we good today, yeah? Do you see what happens if you find your market, put the word out, get the right blend of atmosphere? Yeah, yeah, you end up knackered. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I ain't seen cues in this shop since the day Lee was flogging those mobile phones that turned out to be pencil cases. <laughs> Hey, do you remember that day, Des? Um, Sean, you wanted to help you to sleep, you know? Hey, yeah, great, Pops. Now, Tone, tomorrow... And, what... uh, when I finish your sleeping up, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Don't those dirty towels upstairs. Get fresh ones. Now, Tone, tomorrow... T -t Tomorrow's another day, mate, yeah? And if I sit around here listening to your plans for world domination, tomorrow will be today. So, listen, pal, I'll check you later. Touch. All right, peace out, man. All right. All right, Des. Bye-bye, Tone. Oh. What's the matter, Pops? Oh, nothing. You did good today, son. You said you'd get this place kicking, and you did. If I ever want to sweep her up, well, you know where to come. <laughs> Pops, the shop may be kicking, but that doesn't mean I'm going to be kicking you out. It don't? No. I, well, I did have a great time today, but this is your gig, not mine. I mean, the name above the shop says it all. It does? Yeah. Anyway, whatever I decide to do with my life, I'm not going to be taking your curtain calls. I mean, you and Mum, you've taught me that I can go for anything I want out there. It's just that, well, whatever I go for, I just want you guys to be proud of me, like I'm proud of you. Well, I am proud of you, son. <laughs> just promise you one thing. Name it. Well, every now and then you'd come in from out there and have your hair cut in here, um, short back and sides. That's what you do best, Pops. <laughs> Touch. Touch. <laughs>